Well, yes, I am Jeff Stewart. I am from the Harvard Art Museums. And uh, bear with me for a few minutes while I share some stories with you. Uh, and onward. Yep, I'm going to talk about hacking art with AAAF. Um, I'm the director of the Digital Infrastructure and Emerging Technology Group at Harvard Art Museums. And we go, or I go, by ham, just in case I say ham throughout this presentation, I'm referring to Harvard Art Museums. And uh, so I'm pretty excited to be here and talk about hacking art. Um, I counted up before I did this presentation. This is actually my 12th presentation on AAAF. But the one I'm most interested in giving thus far because I get to wear my ham hat and my artist hat. So I'm going to wear two hats. Not going to cover my face. Um, onward. Yeah. So let's see. I'm going to share some of the artist tools that, and projects that I've dreamed about making for a long time and finally got to start building. And that is in a large region, uh, reason because IIIF has enabled me to, to shift my focus from the technical details of managing pixels to creatively using those pixels. It's awesome. Thank you. So to that end, I'm not going to talk about IIIF for the remainder of my time up here. You've heard plenty about it already. You're going to hear plenty, plenty more about it. Um, there's so much more to say about IIIF. And also much to say about being able to read my notes. Um, I'm going to talk about two projects for the remainder of the time. And I'm going to leave you guessing how and where IIIF is implicated in each of those. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. It's somewhere between uh, nowhere and everywhere. Um, just like the atoms in a, in a giant spiral galaxy. Uh, so this is for all of you people who are visual thinkers, creative practitioners, creative coders, crafters, and so on. But as always, before I get to the projects, I'll give you a brief preamble about HAM. HAM is a teaching museum at a research university in Cambridge, Massachusetts in the United States. I can't overestimate or overstate how much teaching and research factor into our work, so I made sure to highlight those words in this really important looking yellow color. Keep those words in mind. Let them sink in, teaching and research. We have 250,000 art objects in the grand scheme of things. That is not a lot, but when you're talking about unique individual art objects, that is quite a large collection. And um, a large collection means that there's lots of material to hack apart. So onto the hacking part of this. Two projects, Art Forest, the idea, let's grow a digital forest based on the properties of art in our collections and let's give people the ability to hack up art to create a seed packet, then plant those seeds in an ecosystem. It's going to be collaborative, it's going to be constantly changing, it's going to force people to see art through a new perspective, put on some different goggles, and there will be no immediate gratification. You know, after all, trees take a long time to grow. So let's embody that in some way. Uh, and all good projects start with a couple whiteboard sketches. And ultimately, this project progressed to a working prototype written in processing, running on a small screen, aka a laptop screen. It moved off the small canvas to a big canvas, aka a corner of our office and other big walls that I could find around the building. An interface was crafted so users could, could design their trees and plant them in the ecosystem. Here's the controller in action. Uh, it's just me mousing around. I'm picking my leaf. I'm picking my branch. I'm casting it to the wind, and I'm waiting. Cast it to the wind. Off it goes. Uh, so here's, here's a quick peek at the full setup in one of our workspaces called the Materials Lab. It's one of the very few places in our museum with a large blank wall and a blank ceiling, uh, very convenient for this project. Um, the controller on a table turned on, on its end. And so you get a, a little bit of sense of uh, scale. Here's a human interacting with it. Uh, and this was a project that we installed in late May for a student event we held with uh, a late night event for students we held at the museums. And let's see, here's a quick peek at the whole setup. So projector conveniently wedged between two books so it doesn't tip over. A controller, there's a couple uh, keyboard and, and mouse hiding, hiding on the table, or not hiding, just out of view from the camera. And there's the big projection, the forest itself on the wall. And then uh, here are a few details from different iterations of the forest itself. Um, as it grows more and more complex, you are rewarded when you spend time to look closely. There are lots of surprises, like the skull peeking out behind the branches of one of the trees. 
a lovely little surprise. Uh, and here you can just see uh, a, a, a time lapse. This is about uh, 20 minutes of a 27 second, uh, sorry, this is 20 minutes condensed down to 27 seconds. Uh, so that's one growing season for the forest. And that's that project. On to the second project, super closure. Super closure is a tool for making art. It's a tool for hacking art and it's a tool for sketching ideas and on and on and on. Uh, and again, this is based on a few simple principles. Uh, the only way to work with art and create is by directly manipulating the elements, therefore eliminate all noise from the interface, offer the biggest possible workspace, design for multiple screens, the bigger the better. I've always wanted a, a digital cutting mat, so I made one. Uh, so you get, on one screen you get a pile of images and a cutting surface, that's the cutting mat. On a second screen you get uh, an artboard, or the second screen is an artboard and that's where your cuttings appear. It's that simple. And here you see direct manipulation of the images on the cutting mat. I'm clicking through a bunch of images and highlighting areas of interest. I like that eyeball, I like that eyeball, I like this uh, branch from a uh, plant and this as well and maybe one down here. And uh, I'm gonna go check out this other image and uh, yeah, like this little thing here. So clipping, clipping, clipping. And uh, as I do that, the cuttings show up on the artboard. This is the second screen. This is the canvas where I can start making stuff. So everything I, everything I clipped, I can start putting to use immediately. And uh, my artistic skills were not really running very deep the day I made this, so uh, my default is to make funny faces and, and therefore that's what you get to see. Uh, here it is on a two monitor setup as originally designed and intended. Uh, second view just to see some variety. And one last look at manipulating cuttings on the artboard. Um, this is a bit slow. This stuff's all online. You can go watch it in its entirety or come play with the artboard. Find me, I'll load it up. Um, it's all super new. Um, and the really important thing is, is in its future iterations, um, as you might glean, we do a lot of programming in the museum for students. Uh, so we're gonna scale this up to be a multi-person collaging environment on the video wall in uh, one of our public spaces. That's Art Forest, it's super closure. Two attempts at hacking art. And it's because of the great work of this community that uh, I'm able to stop wor worrying about how I'm going to get at all of these pixels and can start dreaming about what I'm going to do with them. Triple IF is about enabling richer access to the world's images and I posit with richer access we have richer dreams. So I challenge you to go make things. Let's hack, create, play, and dream together and uh, thanks for listening. Lots of resources.